Hello, my name is Pamela Abshar. I'm an associate professor here in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering with a joint appointment in the Institute for Systems Research. Um, it turns out that the University of Maryland is a fantastic place for doing interdisciplinary work, so I also have affiliations with the Neuroscience and, Grag Neuroscience and Cognitive Science program, with the Bioengineering program, and with the Maryland Nano Center. I did my undergraduate work in Caltech, at Caltech in physics. Um, then I worked at a biomedical devices company called Medtronic for a, few, for a few years, and after that I did my master's and PhD at the Johns Hopkins University. Following that, I joined the faculty here at Maryland, and my lab here is called the Integrated Biomorphic Information Systems Lab. Um, we do, we've worked on a diverse range of topics that are all summed up as um, resource-efficient technology that takes inspiration from biology. My core inspiration is the observation that in many cases, natural biological systems have found very efficient solutions to technological problems, and we can often learn about how to make technology better by studying those solutions. Um, this has led us in a number of directions. One of those directions was the work I started with my own PhD, which was um, just in fundamental studies of the trade-offs between information processing capability and um, power consumption in a range of physical systems, um, from biological systems to the kinds of engineered systems that we design. This has also led us in other directions, such as when the right technology to apply for a particular application is actually the biological technology that still exists and that has evolved over millions of years. Um, we've developed a number of um, interfaces that allow us to have direct interface to that biological system. Um, for example, we've done a lot of, we've developed a lot of sensors for cells in culture um, that, to measure very, a variety of properties of those cells. Um, the basic idea is to take cell biology out of the laboratory context where most cell biology happens and to allow some of that cell biology and monitoring to happen in more resource limited contexts like out in the field, in a stream, monitoring various biological samples or analytes. Another direction that that's taken us in has been to want to make circuits that themselves can um, emulate some biological behaviors and kind of characteristics in order to get better performance. Um, it turns out that biology suffers from the same problems as engineered systems in that it's made with imprecise components, um, but in a lot of cases the, the organization and the adaptation inherent in the biological system allows it to get much better performance than it would without those, that built-in adaptation. So we've developed a number of adaptive integrated circuits that can improve their own performance or specialize their behavior for different applications. Finally, a new direction that we've gone in, which um, really led out of interactions with other faculty here in the Institute for Systems Research, is in um, a, a quest to find new technologies for miniature robotics, um, both to develop the technology for making miniature robots, as well as the sensors that allow those miniature robots to coordinate their activities together. There are a number of technologies that have come out of this work. A few of them involve very sensitive optical detection. Others involve optical detectors that have built-in signal processing, for example, optical detectors that might allow a little miniature um, aerial vehicle to hover around and navigate through the world. Um, as well, we've developed um, specific attachment sensor, or sensors that allow us to tell how tightly bound a cell is to a surface adaptive circuits that um, adapt their performance to the task that they see going along. Um, for example, an analog to digital converter that performs histogram equalization um, and ad adjusts the bins, adjusts the way it's looking at the world based on the data that it sees. A few examples of research projects that we're working on currently are a nose on a chip that's in collaboration with Elizabeth Smella, who's also affiliated with the Institute for Systems Research. Um, in this project, we're trying to take um, olfactory sensory neurons and use them as the basis to make an olfactory sensor, or, uh, an electronic olfactory sensor, because it still turns out that um, in high value applications where olfaction is an important um, sensing modality, um, still we find dogs in almost every one of those high value applications. Um, so the idea of this project is to take um, those sensors that the dogs use and turn them into an electronic sensor that we can have much more control over in an engineered sense. Um, other projects that we're working on include um, 
sensitive optical detectors and um, in some cases using some of those sensitive optical detectors which we've designed for um, working with these biological specimens to measure fluorescence and bioluminescence um, and um, recently turning them into a, uh, a radiation detector for, um, for um, homeland security type applications. And finally I'll mention a new project that we're starting um, that is um, taking the idea of this single chip motion sensor, um, the, the image sensor that has built in processing, and um, extending it so that we can, in very low dark, um, very, very low light, very dark environments like a cave, um, allow little flyers to, um, to fly around in a much more autonomous fashion than the piloted versions that we have now for big UAVs.